everyone, Cleo here and today I'm talking about my reread TBR. So this is not a TBR for which I have any sort of like set date in which I want to complete it. This is just me going over some books that I desperately want to reread. Now I say desperately, but some of these books I've been saying that I want to reread for years and I just never made the time for them. So who knows whenever I'll get around to them. There is one at least that is scheduled into my reading life at this point in time. So at least that one is going to get an actual reread. So let's start with that one in that sense. And so that is going to be His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. This is the first book, Northern Lights. So I got this copy about two years ago. This is the illustrated edition of Northern Lights. And since then, I've really been meaning to pick it up and get through this book in this illustrated edition. I have the second book in that edition as well at this point in time. The third one is coming out in October or November, I believe. And so with Sasha's patrons, we are going to be reading these ones for the months of September, October, November. So finally, I will be getting around to this reread. His Dark Materials is a series in which we're following this young girl called Lyra who um, is basically taken in by this sort of like university because her uncle is associated with the university and her uncle is this sort of guy who goes on these expeditions and she really really wants to be able to go along with him at some point as well uh, however she hasn't really been allowed to do so and then at the beginning of this story he returns from one particular expedition with a shocking revelation. Now, I've forgotten a lot about the particulars about how this plot kind of sets up. This is a world in which um, people have this sort of like familiars, let's call them, but they're called demons within this book. And when you're a child, your demon is kind of still constantly shifting. But when you're an adult, your demon becomes this fixed form, kind of as if you've found your identity and your demon has settled on one particular form that kind of represents you, which is one of the elements that I really enjoyed about this world a whole lot. Aside from that, I think as a young person a lot of it went over my head because there's a lot of um, discussion about organized religion as well and so um, I'm very eager to dive into this series again and read into those deeper layers this time around. Another review that potentially will actually happen this year is The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle. This is one of my favorite animated movies when I was a child and so recently, I, I mean a few years ago or so, I got this physical copy of it but they're actually doing a reprint of the physical copy in a beautiful hardcover edition which is pre-ordered and which should be landing on my doorsteps end of August, beginning of September. And so I think I'm gonna like officially put it on my own TBR list so that it makes me pick it up earlier. Um, but yeah, I am very much looking forward to reading it again. The Last Unicorn, as the title implies, is about a unicorn who one day finds out that apparently she's the last of her species. And so she sets out into the world to figure out whether that's true and what happened to all of the unicorns besides her. Next reread is The Vegetarian by Han Kang. So I read The Vegetarian by Han Kang and I wasn't really impressed with it. I don't fully remember much about it except for being confused at the end and not really knowing what to make of it, not really understanding what the story was trying to talk about, you know, not really understanding the meaning behind it all and not really understanding whether I had actually enjoyed it or not. Probably not. Um, however, I then read another book by Han Kang, Human Acts, and that was one of my favorite books of the year. Uh, it was an absolute five star. And so that made me want to revisit The Vegetarian and see if maybe a few years later, I have a different experience with this book. Um, the Vegetarian is about this Korean housewife who one day decides not to eat meat anymore and the complex relationship that that evokes in the people around her. But yeah, it's weird. That's all I fully remember about it. Next up, we have another fantasy reread and that is The Empire Trilogy by Raymond E. Feist and Jenny Ward. This is one of these sort of like early fantasy series that I read in my like youth, I would kind of want to say. And it has always stuck with me. And I recently like pushed it on to Sada from uh, Voyage Through Words and she really enjoyed it. So I kind of know like, okay, it probably holds up because I've been kind of worried that rereading it now would kind of make me think differently about this series compared to when I read it like over a decade ago. Um, and then I've also seen Patrick from Patrick Leo really recommend the series as well. So I have high hopes for the fact that it will hold up um, upon a reread at this point in time. I have also reread certain 
passages because this is one of those series that because I've read it early on in my life and it made such an impression I have quite a lot of memory of what takes place in it and so I can more easily find back certain sequences and so I find myself sometimes rereading passages rather than the whole book but I would very much like to reread the entire trilogy and fully remember because I have good memories about like the first book but then my memories kind of fade a little bit more so I want to revisit this one. So in this one we have our protagonist called Mara who is this young girl who is part of of some sort of like aristocratic family let's call it and um, her brother and her father are killed in a sort of like ambush or something like that and she has to kind of take off the role as ruler of her house she has to make sure that her house continues survives thrives within the complex political tapestry of this world. I very much love this one and I know I very much enjoyed the political intrigue and maneuvering and strategizing of this series and so I'm very much looking forward to dive back into it at some point. Next up we have a classic, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This is very much beloved on booktube and whenever I see somebody talk about it I'm like oh, I really should reread it because I don't remember too much about it except for like the eerie atmosphere of this read and of the mystery surrounding this read and not really knowing what's going on. I have since read other Daphne du Maurier's and I always like the the atmosphere that she puts into her works and so I'm very much looking forward to diving back into Rebecca because I know I absolutely loved it the first time that I read it. So in this one we're looking at our protagonist who is not called Rebecca, she is, I don't think we ever find out her name and she's recently married this young widower and whose um, past wife was called Rebecca and the story is very much about her feeling like she's in the shadow of this past Rebecca and feeling like the presence of this past Rebecca is still haunting her to some extent not fit not actually haunting her but you know the presence and the way that people try to compare her to the way that Rebecca was is very much making her manifest as an actual character within this book as though even though you know there's never an actual ghost or anything like that it's just about the lingering presence of his dead wife and the way that that makes his new wife feel. Um, but yeah, I know I really enjoyed this one a whole lot, so I'm very much looking forward to diving back into it. And then the final one that I'm gonna mention here is uh, King's Dark Tidings by Cal Kate. So this is a series all about this young boy called Reskin, who has been trained from a young age to become a sort of like brutal assassin. He has been trained in all of the skills to be a perfect assassin, to infiltrate high society and be able to make his way there with charm and charisma. However, he has never really been taught in any sort of like genuine people skills. He doesn't really have an idea about who he is, what his values are, how to make genuine connections with the people around him. On the day of his final test he basically has to kill off all of his teachers. His teachers of course don't really um, comply and so a massive battle ensues in which one teacher gets away, Reskin survives, but his masters are killed in the process as well. And so Reskin is left without any guidance, setting out into this wide unknown world without a clear goal in mind and not really understanding anything about friendship, genuine human connection and the like. So all he knows is that he was told to kill off all of his teachers and one of them is still alive. So he will set out into the wide world trying to hunt down his past teacher. Now this story is one that I really really enjoy because you know we have this sort of like renaissance man who can do anything he sets his mind to, has been trained in all of these different skills, so he is somebody who can basically tackle any challenge. And the contrast with his bumbling, idiotic, um, totally unaware self when it comes to interpersonal connections is really interesting and something that I find really enjoyable. Now it is definitely more on the light side a lot of the times, so it's definitely a little bit more of a humoristic fantasy at times, and it kind of doesn't shy away from like leaning into the stereotypes of fantasy and kind of making light mockery of them but that's something that I also really enjoy about this series in particular but so there are two new books within the series this year so we have already had a prequel come out a major of no renown and then the fifth book is going to come out in September so at some point I want to find the time to reread the series so far and continue on because 
definitely the events in the final two books I'm a bit hazy on. I don't really fully remember anymore how everything evolved at that point in time. So I would need to revisit in order to be able to continue and have everything clear in my mind. But so yeah, this is the list of the rereads. As I said in the beginning, no idea when I'll get around to some of these. But hopefully in a year's time, some of these will have been reread. But so yeah, let me know what your like main reread is at this moment. Like what's the one book you've been meaning to reread but just can't seem to find a time for. And I uh, if you're interested in any of these series as well, then definitely let me know as well down below. But so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video and see you guys for the next one. Bye!